Hey, welcome back, options traders. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, we know that yesterday on March 16th of 2022, we had kind of an important FOMC announcement from the Fed, and they're becoming more critical because of all of the potential news that we've seen about inflation. But I had a trader ask, well, who is it that exactly votes at the FOMC meetings? Is it just the Fed chair? Or if it's the FOMC, what does that entail? Or is it the Board of Governors? We hear all of these different terms and it can get kind of confusing about who's actually voting on these policies. So this is a little different video from what I normally do, which is usually primarily on options and strategies, but I think it helps to understand the inner workings of the Federal Reserve and who's actually casting these votes. So here's one of the headlines from yesterday, Federal Reserves approves first interest rate hike in more than three years and sees six more ahead. So this was really the question that this trader was asking. Well, when we talk about the Federal Reserve and that they've approved an interest rate hike, who's actually approving that? Because again, we hear about the Fed chair, we hear about the Board of Governors, we hear the FOMC. What exactly are we talking about? Well, like most government agencies, it can get a little confusing. So let's start with the Federal Reserve. It is the central bank of the U.S. You can think of it as the Bankers Bank, created in 1913. And it was originally created to enhance the stability of the banking system. So to prevent runs on banks and things like that. If banks came a little short on money, usually due to fears or people thinking that there was going to be a banking collapse and everybody wants to withdraw their money all at once. And for those who understand fractional reserve banking, know that the money that you think is in the bank is simply not there. So it is certainly possible that people might want to withdraw more money than is actually there, and that could cause the bank to default. So this is where the Fed would step in and provide liquidity. So we saw this during COVID and a number of different economic events throughout history. But it was the Humphrey Hawkins Act of 1978 actually called the Humphrey Hawkins Full Employment Act, but it was this act that gave the Fed what's called a dual mandate. And that's really just kind of the two key reasons or the two key things that the Fed should be focused on. And that is to promote stable prices, that's one, and number two, maximum employment. Now, of course, when we say maximum employment, that doesn't mean that everybody out there can have a job. We're just saying that it's the maximum under kind of ideal situations. We're never going to have 100% employment. And sometimes it's for voluntary reasons. But the point is that they have these boundaries that they try to work within. And at least back then, it was a 3% unemployment for those age 20 or older, and 3% inflation or less. Now, because as economies change and conditions change, we're starting to see where they might start to relax some of these but these were the initial dual mandates of the Fed. So these are the really the two key things that the Fed focuses on. So whenever you hear about the Federal Reserve, or sometimes called the Fed for short, there's really two different components to it. There's one part that is called the Board of Governors, and the Board of Governors consists of seven members. And these members serve a 14-year term, but the chair serves a four-year term within this 14-year term. Now, a Fed chair can serve multiple terms. So they don't just serve four and then gone, but they absolutely have to be gone after the 14-year member term. So the Fed chair is nominated by the president, confirmed by the Senate, and the current chair, as I think most of you know, is Jerome Powell, who was sworn in at the end of January 2018. And previous ones you all know are Janet Yellen, and then we saw Ben Bernanke, Alan Greenspan. There's been a number of them, but these are really the faces that you see in the news. And when they say that the Fed has announced something, right now you're going to see Jerome Powell. But that doesn't mean that he is the only one casting votes. So to understand that, we have to look at the FOMC meetings. So by law, the Fed must meet at least four times per year, but it usually meets eight times per year per year or about every six weeks. And the basic idea is that they are discussing domestic and international economic developments, looking at data on inflation and employment, and trying to figure out how to 
maybe financially engineer a softer landing if things are looking kind of dicey out there. So the meetings are conducted and voted by the FOMC, and that stands for the Federal Open Markets Committee. So when you hear that the Fed meeting is being conducted or that the Fed voted on something, it is not just the Board of Governors. It is the FOMC. So now that raises a question, who in the world is the FOMC? Well, now we have to dive into the regional banks. We have the Federal Reserve, the Board of Governors, but we also have 12 regional banks. And we also have 24 branches of these regional banks. But typically when you hear about the Fed banks, it's these 12 regional banks. Now what makes the Fed even stranger is that these regional banks are private. So we have a government side to the Fed, that would be the Board of Governors, but we also have the private side, the regional banks. And they are in alphabetical order. We have Atlanta, Boston, Cleveland, Chicago, Dallas, Kansas City, Minneapolis, New York, Philadelphia, Richmond, San Francisco, and St. Louis. Now, it turns out that all of these bank presidents attend the FOMC meetings, and they will all speak, they will all give their inputs into what they think the Fed should or shouldn't do, or their interpretations of what's happening with inflation or unemployment. But within these 12 regional banks, the New York bank president always votes. And Cleveland and Chicago have alternating years. So Cleveland votes one year, Chicago votes the next. And yes, I know it can get kind of confusing, but it turns out that when we talk about the FOMC meeting, it's really 12 of these 19 people who vote that make up the FOMC. So for any given meeting, we have the Board of Governors, there are seven votes. We have the New York president, and that's eight. Then we alternate between Chicago and Cleveland. So there's nine votes right there. Now after that, we have nine remaining regional banks. And so for any given year, these remaining nine alternate every third year. So we might see this year, for instance, let's say we have Atlanta, Boston, and Dallas might cast the other three votes. And then the next year, we would alternate between Cleveland and Chicago, but then we might see that Kansas, Minneapolis, and Philadelphia would then vote. And then the next year, we might see Richmond, San Francisco, and St. Louis. So those nine banks rotate every three years. Cleveland, Chicago alternates every year, New York votes every year, and the Board of Governors always vote. So yes, I know it can get confusing, but I thought that might be a little helpful just because we hear about it so much and it's definitely going to be some headlines you will be seeing a lot in the future. And the reason it's important to stay in tune with the Fed, a couple of reasons. You've always heard, don't fight the Fed. We've seen many of the Fed-fueled bubbles that have existed in the past. We've seen it in the stock market, education bubbles, housing bubbles. Now we're seeing some government debt bubbles. And these are part of the tools of the Fed. And so to be better traders, it does help to stay in tune with the Fed. And now hopefully you have a better understanding of who is casting the votes. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. You can find it all at optionsa to z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find the link in the description below.